Motorsports.com. All right, welcome to our latest HoopCast. Pat Dooley and Kevin Brockway, the Gainesville Sun, and it uh, wasn't a good week for the Gators, Kevin. You know, it's funny to me, though, I keep hearing other radio guys, and I was listening to some Jacksonville radio today, acting like Xavier was this crappy team that came in here and beat Florida. <laughs> and if you were there, as you were, and I, and I was, or I were, um, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's a team that's going to make a deep run in the NCAA. Yeah, you know, that's a team that's 27 RPI. You know, I think a lot of people, when they look at the smaller name, it's an Atlantic right. 10 conference. But let me tell you something. The Atlantic 10 might get as many bids as the SEC this I, year. You've got Richmond. You've got yeah. Dayton. Lenardi's got um, six going in from You've the got Atlantic Rhode 10. Island, or, you know, Temple. I mean, there are a lot of very good teams in the Atlantic 10, and, and Dayton really showed that uh, – you know, I thought that they could probably compete with anyone in the uh, SEC other than maybe Kentucky. I mean, they, they had that much talent and that much doubt, uh, that much depth in terms of, yeah. you know, big guys and guards that could play. Jamal Crawford, you know, was a former Indiana guy. He could play just about anywhere in the country. Well, he was good, and uh, they were so big. They had no answer for love. Uh, you know, they and the big guy, uh, Freeze, who seven-footer, who was just looked like a big doofus, <laughs> and, he sco- and he scored 12 points, I think, in that game. Uh, they were just... I, I look. I think Florida plays Xavier 15 times. They might win once. I, I, Xavier is a bad matchup for them, and I still stick with my theory. I think this team's a little worn down. Um, and again, if you want to blame somebody for that, you blame uh, Billy Donovan and the coaching staff. I mean, I'm not trying to pass blame, but you're the ones who evaluated. You're the ones who recruited. You're the ones who ran off the Jonathan Mitchells and Brandon Powells, and um, you know Jonathan Mitchell scored 24 yeah, exactly. tonight for Rutgers. Had a very nice um, game. So you know. There's a lot of, I mean, certainly injuries, and but you can't keep going back to Calatus and Spates and yeah. say that's the reason they're struggling. The reason, if they had an, an Alan Chaney to throw in there uh, and give, and, and Dan Warner would be playing five minutes instead of 25 minutes, they'd be a different team. Yeah, and, you know, I think the guard depth, too, you know, obviously yeah. mis-evaluating some guys. Uh, Tishman, you know, having McClanahan play ahead of him. You know, just really not getting that third guard in the rotation or that backup yeah. point guard that could, because you can really see now Walker and Boynton, uh, particularly Walker, you know, you could see it's really affecting his shooting and, and so forth. Uh, but I think what was a big concern to me was that that first 15 minutes of the game, yeah. coming out with the lack of intensity, getting beat down the court. You know, certainly, sure. you know, the press didn't help matters, but uh, that really surprised me with, with that much at stake. They came out with a little, you know, lack of intensity. Plus, Walker shows up late for a team meeting before the game. It cost him a yeah, starting assignment. That's free, not thro- good, man. free throws. So, you know, you have to wonder, you know, does Billy need to kind of light a fire under these guys? I, I wonder. You know, I wrote about that today. You take a look at what Jim Calhoun did over the weekend, and, mm-hmm. and they came out and they had a big game against Villanova. I mean, it's kind of sink or swim time. What do you do yeah. to try to get these guys going? Well, and part of the problem is, I mean, Calhoun's got more than seven players, too. That yeah. helps as well. But, uh, you know, we'll see if they do. Look, the bottom line is, as you sit here today, is Florida is just outside the bubble, according to most people. Um, you know, Lenardi has them as the first team out. Yeah. Um, so it's still there's still hope. I, I've, I've declared them done. I, I don't yep. think they, they've got anything left, and I think their schedule's too tough the rest of the way. Uh, but certainly, you've got to go and you've got to win some games, and you've got to and you kind of look at these. It's almost like you do a little scoreboard watching the yep. Marquettes of the world, yep. the Charlottes, Mississippi State, and Ole Miss. Yep. You know, again, Florida, go beat Ole Miss on Saturday. That that'd be a huge step forward. Or if you take a look at other conferences, Connecticut, you know, beating, yeah. you know, uh, Villanova, you know, keeps them alive. You know, th- things like that. You know, from from other schools, not just the SEC. But I think four of your last six, I think, is is very important at this point. And yeah. um, but obviously, it begins with the first one against an Auburn team that. You know, they're, they're two and two in their last four. I just looked this up. And two of their other teams, they took to overtime on the road. So they're playing a little bit better right now. And this isn't a game that certainly Florida yeah. can afford to overlook. They're kind of a weird team. They're kind of the opposite of Florida. Is that early in the season with them, you always go, man, they're awful again. And then they kind of scare some people and beat yeah. some people. And, and they're kind of a dangerous team. You better show up and you better come to play if you're Florida. Because you lose this game, it is completely over. <laughs> you are finished. So you've got to win this game. And like you said, the last six, you go four and two. Uh, and, and the other thing that that would allow them to do likely is finish third in the, in the East. Yeah. You finish third in the East, you get to open up against the mighty LSU Tigers who are going for the first 0-16 season in the history of the conference. 
Uh, so that would be a good good move for them. If they can get to third, I mean, I, it's over for me. Yeah, and then, you know, you play the number two seed in the West, which right. could be either Mississippi or Mississippi State in the second game, and that's another that winnable could be game. Anybody. On, that's, <laughs> that's, a, that's another winnable game yeah. on a neutral, or it could be Arkansas, yeah. too. Yeah, that, that's another winnable game, though, on a neutral floor. So, uh, you know, uh, it, that would set them up very well in the SEC mm -hmm. tournament to get a couple of wins to kind of cement a bid. But uh, obviously the first thing is Auburn, and, uh, you know, they play three guards. They're a little undersized. But um, they do rebound uh, decently, so uh, Florida's yeah. going to have to, you know, come with, with a little more, particularly early in the game. I'm looking at the first 10 minutes. Come out with intensity, yeah. build a lead, yeah. so that you don't have to play uphill like you did against Xavier. Isn't it, uh, it doesn't seem like Auburn has the same team every year, it's just different names. Yeah. Everybody's <laughs> like five, or between 6'1 and 6'5, and they can all shoot threes, and they, they can run, they're athletic, but they don't have any size. Lebo has been never been able to recruit big guys yeah. there and every time he does like he had this one guy from France that turned out to be a complete stiff. I think there was a guy from even Santa Fe that he tried to get that uh, yeah. I don't see in the rotation anymore. Uh, that's a big kid. So uh, it's been a it's been a real struggle for him getting quality big guys. You know, he has the one guy Lucas Hargrove this year is kind of like Corvatney Barber last year, undersized guy, rebounds right. hard. But he's only what six 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 seven, you know. So yeah, so, uh, so this hey, should be a game where Macklin and Tyus say, and yeah. Parsons really get after on the ball and get some second chance points. And, and that's it's up to you guys. I mean, so light a fire under them, Billy. I mean, you, you get this win and then you go to Ole Miss and, and see what happens. I mean, that's yeah. that's all you can do right now is just keep. And Billy made a good point. He goes, well, yeah, they want to get to the NCAA tournament, and the best way to get to the NCAA tournament is winning. Yep. You win, you go. Yep. You don't win, you're going to the NIT. You can start. Uh, clearing that schedule out in the O'Connell Center <laughs> for that first round game against uh, DePaul or whoever. Yeah. Um, even DePaul won't get in the NIT. But we'll see what happens. Florida with a big game, of course, Thursday. We'll come back and talk about that game Friday as well as, when are you leaving for um, lovely Ole Miss? No, I leave Friday. So. Oh, so this is it. We're previewing them both right yeah, now. Yeah, and that, Ole you know, Miss, yeah, good team. We'll see. Another, another, yeah, another tough game on the road for the Gators. And uh, certainly, you know, Andy Kennedy's done a great job with the guards. And Chris Warren, a guy from the state of Florida that's right. doing very well, a point guard. Obviously, you know, Florida recruited Nick Calathis ahead of him. But Warren is a, you know, very good, kind of similar Irving Walker type point guard. Little guy that can shoot the ball well. And Terrico White is one of the more underrated guys in the SEC, too. So that's going to be very tough on, on the road as well. And, yeah. of course, with the turnaround. But, hey, Florida's been 4-0 in those four, four Thursday, Saturday so far, so they seem to have figured that out. Yeah, I think a lot had to do with their opponents on those Thursday, Saturdays as well. Yeah. But there's certainly Ole Miss is a good team. Ole Miss, the team has started out strong and has faded a little bit, and they need they need you know they're they're looking at it. We need to win to to get back in the mix because they're on the boat are outside the bubble as well. In fact, Lenardi has Mississippi State, Florida, and Ole Miss all as the first four teams out. So. Um, you're going to see a lot of jostling within the conference. Yeah, no question. And the, the funny thing is, we talked about, was this a five or a six bid league? Lenardi has Florida with, or the SEC with three bids right now. Yeah. And that's the thing. Somebody's got to step up here, or the SEC is going to be no better off than it was a year ago. Yeah, yeah. But I think that you might see another team from the West emerge, be it Mississippi, Mississippi State. And maybe Florida, you know, you might end up yeah. with five bids. And you never know in the SEC tournament, too, someone could surprise you and, and get the automatic bid as like, well. Like they did last year with Mississippi exactly. State. Exactly. Well, we'll see. Haven't, uh, Kevin will be heading off to uh, Oxford. Are you staying in Memphis? Staying in beautiful Memphis. Yeah. So, yeah. Go gonna to go to the rendezvous, get Gotta some go ribs. Gotta go to the rendezvous, get some ribs, and uh, tell The firm always something. advises that you don't drink during business hours, right? That's right. Gene That's Hackman, right. good stuff. Yeah. Uh, I thought you meant the UAA. I thought you meant that firm. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, you have a good time there, and um, I will uh, be, join you for the Florida-Auburn game as well. We'll come back after the weekend and tell you what we saw in those two games, as well as previewing the next game next week, which would be on Wednesday, correct? Tuesday. Tuesday. ESPN against, game against the Vols. And that's a late game, right? Yeah, 9 o'clock, big game. Oh, I hate those games. It'll be a big <laughs> game, though, and it should be a loud crowd. Yeah. Until next time, Pat Dooley, Kevin Brockway, the games will sun so long from the Sunshine State.